that sound? Hi, everybody. Hi. My name is Craig. This is my beautiful wife, Epac. Hi. We're going to talk about essential oils today. Before we drop in, how many people have heard of essential oils? How many people have used essential oils? Yeah. Cool. So this class is designed to be a, a very low level overview. So why don't we start with a little experience? Let's start first with some peppermint and we're gonna try and do this as a group. So I'm gonna come around with some peppermint. Epex coming around with some peppermint. If you can, just put your, uh, put your left hand out. So everybody has a little bit of peppermint in their left hand. You're just gonna spread it out, just getting it all over your hands without getting it in your eyes. This is very important. Do not get peppermint oil in your eyes. Cover your nose, take a nice deep inhale through your nose, holding your breath at the top like this. The longer you hold the breath, the more peppermint you absorb. I'll tell you why in a minute. It is powerful, it is potent. Do not get it in your eyes. And a nice slow exhale. One more, nice deep inhale. As you exchange oxygen, you're also absorbing essential oil into your bloodstream. Nice deep and exhale. And one more, nice deep inhale, together. Within 30 seconds, it's in your bloodstream. Within 20 minutes, that one drop is gonna be in every cell in your body. Pretty powerful stuff. Now this time, curl your hand, cover your other hand, and deep through your mouth. Yep. Depending on what you've been doing all weekend, that, that might open you up. What you're doing is you're opening up your lungs. You're actually absorbing more oxygen, pulling more oxygen into your bloodstream, making you more alert, more awake. Pretty amazing stuff, huh? You can do that a couple more times. For many of us, this is the only time we take a deep breath during the day. So the peppermint that we use is from a company called doTERRA, which we'll get into in, in a moment. This peppermint comes from Washington, the state of Washington. And essential oils are the defense mechanisms for plants, bushes, trees. Seeds, bark, stems, roots, plants. Peppermint. So one drop of peppermint is the equivalent of ingesting 28 cups of peppermint tea. 28. Really, really potent. Nobody would sit down and drink 28 cups of peppermint tea. But if you did, you'd get that therapeutic value. Okay, so that's why it's really important. These essential oils are 50 to 70 times more concentrated than their herbal counterpart. So that's where you get the 28 cups of tea versus the one. Pretty, pretty, pretty potent stuff. So you want to be very careful. I see people all the time that are dropping four, five, six drops of oil. Total overkill. <laughs> Take one, see how you feel. Take another, see how you feel. They absorb directly into the body. They uh, impact your limbic system which is one of the reasons why it has such a powerful and potent effect on our mood and our body. And we'll get into that in a minute when we talk about aromatically. Um, but they are highly concentrated. They work at the cellular level and they protect your cells. They're basically the nutrients that the trees use to communicate with one another. If you've ever heard the forest communicates with one another, and I'm sure there's somebody that's gonna talk on that and its efficacy a lot deeper than we'll touch on it here. But this is part of that chemical release. If you think of seventh grade, kind of chemistry class or biology class, you see just cells, cell, 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 cell. It just zips from one to another. It's pretty wild to watch under a microscope as well. So that's what's happening in your cells. And as we're gonna learn in a minute, we are inhaling it, we're using it aromatically, and we are uh, also applying it topically. It absorbs into your hands. So essential oils, they are volatile compounds. Those volatile compounds basically means that it evaporates at room temperature. So very quickly, when you put it on your hand, you'll notice none of your hands should be oily or greasy, depending on what you were doing before you came here. But that essential oil absorbs in very quickly. And as long as it doesn't have a carrier oil mixed with it, or as long as it doesn't have um, any oils from your skin, and as long as it's a pure oil, it should not leave a residue on your clothing, and it should evaporate very, very quickly. And we could talk about dilution, if you guys have questions about that after this class. Yeah, let's start with our story. <laughs> why do we use, why are we using essential oils? Craig and I started using essential oils about five, four. four or five years ago. I had some health issues um, during that period and uh, we changed our, our diet completely. Mm -hmm. Learned about what GMOs are and how bad they could be for our system. So we 
uh, switched our diet to an all-organic non-GMO and uh, also went gluten-free right around that time and uh, so that was it started with the food we changed everything in our house then it kind of spread to you know the our the different products that we use um, my makeup toiletries even you know the, what we put on our skin and what we're putting in the air around us um, I actually want you to tell this part where sure <laughs> with your, yeah, so this was part of uh, kind of an interesting morning. EPEC was having some health issues. We go gluten free. I keep getting sick after we're going gluten free. Like every like over a course of six months, I keep getting these head colds and I can't figure out what's going on. So I start doing legit research or what I think is legit research, and I learn about GMOs. Horrified. If you don't know what GMOs are and how they genetically modify our Look food, there's probably another talk on that here. Talk to any of the organic purveyors, and they'll tell you all about it. You don't want to be eating GMO food, and you don't want to be putting those chemicals on your skin. So basically we stopped using deodorant, we stopped using cologne. I stopped using cologne. And I was like, I don't smell, I'm good. So I come home from work one day, give my wife a kiss, and she goes like, how long you smelled like that? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, you fucking stink. I was like, excuse our language. Sorry, sorry. But she was like, you smell, you're not leaving the house like that tomorrow. And I was like, well, what am I gonna do? I'm not using cologne, I'm not using those synthetic chemicals. So she goes, well, I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna get some, some essential oils. And she did, and she came back with 25 essential oils and she started mixing them and concocting them and putting together all these incredible mixes. And I really fell in love with peppermint and wild orange. It was like two of my favorite oils. And I couldn't figure out why, I now know why. So for about two and a half years, we're using essential oils. I'm using it as cologne. Every event that I'm going to, everybody's kind of loving what we're doing and, and asking me, oh, that smells great, can I have some? And peppermint makes you more alert as hopefully everybody's enjoying right now wild orange also from the citrus family also keeps you a little perks you up makes you a little bit more alert cleanses and detoxifies the body opens the heart so wild orange is phenomenal so I couldn't figure out why I was doing it EPEC then got a headache and we didn't have any Advil or Tylenol it was kind of two o'clock in the morning and I didn't really feel like going anyplace so I was like wait a minute we have all these essential oils in the house. And Google. Let's Google it. <laughs> and I bet we could use some of these oils for medicinal purposes. And sure enough, you mix peppermint and lavender together and you put it a little bit in your hand. You put some behind your ear. You put some on your temple. If it's a cerebral kind of top of the head headache, you could put some around the crown of your head. Watch your eyes. Put some on the back of your neck at the brain stem and you can literally wait and just watch it just disappear, right? It all comes down to why you're having that headache in the first place. You're just treating the symptoms, you're not treating the reason why, however, it can certainly alleviate those symptoms really, really strongly. And that began basically our quest to figure out and identify what these essentials are all, what these essential oils are all about and what else we could do with them medicinally and what other applications there are. What we're gonna do today is what we'd love to do is kind of go through kind of six of our favorite essential oils, talk to you about some of their medicinal properties and purposes. We'll pass them around so that you can smell them. We will ask that you don't pour them out or touch the tops. At this point, you guys all have peppermint on you and if we douse you in a bunch of different oils, it's just gonna mix. So let's talk about those three environments. It's really interesting. So as we're doing our research and as we're trying to figure out how we can be the most healthy selves, right? Basically, these three environments kept coming up. Like what we put in our mouths, what we keep on our skin and what we keep in the air around us. Other people's perfumes, other people's colognes, candles, incense. We were, we were using all of them. Well, not other people's cologne, but we were <laughs> dousing ourselves in our own cologne and perfume. And we were burning incense everywhere we went, and we just didn't realize what that was doing to our lungs and to our bodies. We got rid of all of it. It was kind of a very transformational time in our lives. And as we started to study essential oils, we started to realize that it's these three same environments that you can apply and use essential oils as well, aromatically, right? topically, or you can ingest essential oils if they are food grade and if they are of a, of a pure enough source. And I can't urge that enough. It's really important that you understand where they come from. And there are many legit sources. In fact, Penny Livingston is going to start a talk at 1245. Not that I want anybody to leave here, <laughs> but she's going to go through the distillation process of essential oils. So if you're looking to see how they're actually distilled, it's, amazing. it's pretty amazing. We actually shared some space with her here last year. And one of our questions was, you know, why aren't you guys distilling and, and let's get you guys involved in that. And for us, it's really about the education to sit here and see 75 beautiful faces that are in, enthralled with what we're talking about when we're talking about essential oils. This to us is really what it's all about and sharing the knowledge that we have so that you guys can feel empowered to leave here, get yourselves a high quality essential oil and be able to use it medicinally. 
and I'll show you what we walk around with and how we use kind of what we use on a regular basis once we kind of get through this as well. Want to talk about aromatically? Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so one of the environments is uh, aromatically. One, one way to use essential oils is aromatically. And we just had that experience. We inhaled, took deep, long, deep breaths, and got the essential oil into our system. Now, what we just experienced also kind of goes into the topical. So we kind of, you know, double uh, teamed up on there. Double dipped. <laughs> double dipped. Um, so another way to use it aromatically is through a diffuser. Um, how many of you guys have a diffuser in your homes or car or anywhere? Amazing. One in every room. <laughs> We do have one in every room and we even have car diffusers. We travel with our diffusers everywhere. We have one in our tent back at camp and just absolutely awesome. love it. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's really important is that what we breathe really affects our mood. Um, you know, if ever I'm feeling kind of maybe down or um, just need a little bit of like a encouragement. Um, earlier before we got started, I know we were talking, I was uh, using a different oil to get, me, to get me to focus and really be present in this moment. Um, so what we breathe really affects our mood. It references and touches on the limbic system, which is a direct it's a direct correlation to how you're feeling and the mood of your body. So if you want to feel uplifted, well, actually, mm -hmm. you do a little bit of peppermint, right? A little bit of wild orange, as we talked about. If you want to calm and relax, the active constituent inside lavender is a chemical called linalol. Linalol actually calms and relaxes you at a cellular level. Remember, this all it goes into each cell in your body. So it calms and relaxes the function of each cell. We're a bag of cells running around, right? So if you calm your cells, you calm your mind, you calm your body. So let's talk about topically. Topically, these oils are powerful, right? One drop, as I mentioned, can touch every cell in your body. They absorb through any part of your skin as well. So you'll see there's a bunch of different touch points that you can apply essential oils. One of the most powerful is the bottom of your feet. Every, anybody put oils on the bottoms of your feet? Legit, yeah. So Chinese medicine, okay? Chinese medicine, we've got nerve endings that all end on the bottoms. Our meridians all end on the bottoms of our feet. We have auricular points on our ears, our hands, and our feet. And rubbing these areas with essential oils, rubbing them in general certainly releases stress and strain, but rubbing these areas with essential oil activates that essential oil directly to that part of your body. And I could tell you an experience that I had, my mom just had pneumonia, she was in the hospital. I brought three essential oils with me to the hospital. On guard to increase her immune system, breathe to open up her lungs and get her breathing, and melaleuca to reduce uh, inflammation and um, fungus infection in her lungs as well. It's antifungal, antimicrobial, antibacterial. And I was, tea tree oil. Melaleuca oil is more commonly tea tree oil, right? It's in just about everything, especially with the beauty uh, the beauty products that are out there today. So putting it on the bottoms of my mom's feet, so she had pneumonia, my mom's 70 years old, she was hooked up to a regular feed of oxygen and she wasn't absorbing enough oxygen into her body. Putting breathe on the bottoms of her feet, sorry, but right about here, show you guys the bottoms of my feet, but putting it across the tops of the toes, that's where the, the, the lung capacity is and that's where the connection to the lungs are. We, I literally, as soon as the oil touched her feet, watched her oximeter, right, her oxygen meter, go through the roof up to 100. So she'd hover down at 85, 88, right? Anything below 88 is alarming for people. So this jumped her, jumped her right up to 100. Immediately, she was breathing slower, breathing calmer, and helping and supporting that healthy respiratory function. Really, really powerful. Yeah. Yes. Question, um, how Every 15 minutes, right? <laughs> depending on the oil and depending, depending on, on the oil. application, okay. okay? So in the most acute of situations, on guard, on the hour, every hour, right? Will help support and boost your immune system. When you're working with an oil like oregano, right? Really potent, really powerful. The liver works really, really hard to, to filter that out of the bloodstream. And you wanna use that uh, for short periods of time. So like 10 days, maybe twice, three times a day, instead of every hour. Right? So it really depends on the oil, its concentration, and its impact, and how you're ingesting it. As we'll talk about in a minute, ingesting it through your mouth orally, uh, there are other ways to get it into your body, but to do it orally, I would really save that for the most acute of situations. It's not something that I recommend people do on a regular basis, but instead, applying it, yeah, stereo, thank you. But instead, um, topically, and diffusing it through a diffuser, 
Oh, you want to touch on that too. So diffuser, the diffuser that we recommend is a water diffuser. So it's a cold water diffuser. And you're actually double diffusing it, right? You're diffusing it once, a few drops into a, a bunch of milliliters of water, and then you're diffusing it again into the air. So in something like that, uh, and it's important to note, you don't need to smell the oil in order uh, to actually be getting the effect. One of my favorite things to do to my grandparents because they can't take strong smells. So I run a diffuser like way the heck on the other side of the room and she has no idea. But when I put it too close to her, she's like, Greg, turn it off. It's too much. I'm like, okay, Grandma, I love you. It's good. It's good for you. It's good for you. I like it. Yeah. We had a question over here. Oh, yes. Um, if you're, if you're, because I know you talked about respiratory, if you're wanting to treat your sinuses, yes. would that, would this be the best place? Is there a better place? So I always recommend, wow, that is awesome. So I always recommend going legit straight to the, straight to the place, right? So um, particularly peppermint or breathe, inhaled through your nose, right? If your nose is clogged and you can't open your nose, inhale it through your mouth. If you have a high enough quality oil, you can take a drop of peppermint on your thumb and apply it to the, to the roof of your mouth. It absorbs right through the roof of your mouth and directly into your sinus cavity. Really, really powerful. Really powerful. So depending on what you're working with, what ailment, what issue, you kind of got to think of this logically. Like, well, where is this part and where, what's, what's happening here? That's how you want to apply. Right? So if it's something in your lungs, you want to breathe it in. If it's something in your, in your face, you might want to put it on the roof of your mouth or inhale it through your nose. Yeah. Every couple of weeks, we uh, not uh, my department. Because <laughs> <laughs> I bought one, and I, I was just curious, like how long? Because obviously, stuff's gonna grow, and you don't want to take. Like, yes, like, definitely. Now, every time, um, I what I do is I take a paper towel and I wipe the inside. That's just like my quick clean in between if I'm changing the oil specifically. Um, and then you can also just run water and just like a few drops of um, white white vinegar and just run that through the diffuser. Maybe when you leave the house. And uh, you could do that, you know, depending on how much you're using your diffuser, once a week or once every two weeks. We use them pretty often, so <laughs> we have them going all the time. So I try to keep on like the once a week. Yeah, that should be good. We'll talk about internally? Talk about internally. I, I want to say one more thing about the, um, uh, the topically, which uh, we're going to be we're going to be passing passing another oil um, that's one of my favorites. It's On Guard. It's the um, the it, the immune support blend, which uh, um, especially like you know weekends like this where we're around a lot of people, a lot of immune systems, we just douse ourselves in On Guard every day. And um, so something that you asked. Um, so certainly, you know, applying it in other areas of your body. Now, I would say when you're first getting started with essential oils or if you're newer to it, let your body adjust to it. So maybe just start with the inhaling. Um, and you could put it also on the bottoms of your feet. So On Guard is one of my favorites to put on the bottoms of my feet and also smell it. Um, and uh, you can also put a little bit drop on your fingertips and put it right on your glands, right where your um, lymph nodes are. Um, I had to do that this morning because I woke up with a little bit of a scratch in my throat. So. Now it's gone. Oh, we have a question in the back. Go ahead. I was just wondering, what oils did you say you recommended to alleviate like long issues? Breathe. Breathe is so a proprietary blend. Breathe, breathe is a proprietary blend by doTERRA. Young Living, we also use Young Living again. For us, it's just about having a high quality oil. Young Living and doTERRA both have great oils. Uh, they have a respiratory blend as well. At its core, there are oils that are blended in there. You're talking about peppermint, you're talking about eucalyptus. Um, cardamom is fantastic for opening up the lung capacity and absorbing more oxygen into your lungs. The most, the most potent one though is by far probably peppermint. Um, so getting a, a really solid pe version of peppermint probably opens me up the most. If I'm stuffed or congested, sinuses, allergies, um, I use peppermint. If you have a cold, right, it depends on the application. So when you get a head cold, lavender actually around the bottom of the nose dries up mucus remarkable. The more I learn about these oils, the more infatuated I become with sharing this knowledge because who knew? A little bit of lavender around the ring of your nose and a couple minutes later, breathe city. Remarkable. <laughs> so we're talking about internally. That was next, right? So three different ways, just for review, three different ways that you can use essential oils aromatically through a diffuser or by inhaling it through your hands, topically by putting it directly on your skin, or you can ingest it by putting a drop underneath your tongue. And as I mentioned, this is really something you want to reserve for uh, the most acute of issues. You can dilute it by putting a drop in four ounces of water. Um, one of my favorite things to do when I'm out and about, this is what I travel with, by the way, and I thought it was important. My wife and I both 
we both travel with these little these little carrier okay. kits that each have eight oils in them. One of them is kind of focused on well-being and smelling great, and another one is kind of focused on on dousing my water and, and keeping people healthy. Um, I love putting uh, this combination four oils: lemon and orange. One drop of lemon, one drop orange, one drop ginger, one drop peppermint. And I put it in a big glass of water and I continue to refill it and I never let it go all the way down to the bottom. As long as I continue to refill it, I continue to taste it the entire time I'm drinking out of that bottle uh, of water. Anytime you're ingesting these oils or anytime you're mixing these oils into anything, you want to make sure you're mixing it in glass or stainless steel. Plastic over time will actually be eroded by the essential oils. One of my favorite uses for lemon oil is to remove sticky residue. It operates just like Gugan. Except if you ever read the ingredient list of Gugan, you realize you never want to use that stuff. But it works so well. <laughs> Lemon oil works just as well. Uh, it does the same thing to uh, your body, right? If you let it continue to apply over and over and over again. So you want to make sure that you're, you're very conscious of that. Speak. I wanted to add one more thing. Um, as far as, sorry, going back to the topical usage again. Uh, if you have sensitive skin, please, 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 uh, dilute the um, essential oil with a carrier oil and by carrier oil I mean either coconut oil you can use jojoba oil um, I love rosehip oil or apricot seed oil those are some of my favorites just please 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 dilute it and then try it on your skin because we don't want to um, you know if you, we don't want to have you uh, have break out in a rash or anything like that it might just be too much for your body so you have to kind of get to know how your body works with these oils and I think through throughout time as you keep using it using it perhaps your dilution um, proportions will be a little bit less and then you can get to a point where you can use it um, just straight I to that. yeah and that's actually it's different for everyone um, I'll tell a quick story. So we've got a pretty decent sized team at doTERRA that we teach and educate through. And one of the gals in our downline began using grapefruit oil and was it orange? Lemon? Ber bergamot. Bergamot. She started using them like we drink, we drink probably, I don't know, six of these a day filled with water. And uh, every single one of them, she was putting grapefruit, a drop of grapefruit, a drop of lemon. I mean, she was just putting a whole bunch of stuff. She wound up detoxifying her body faster than she could eliminate the toxins from her body. She broke out in a rash. Russian, beautiful gal, beautiful porcelain skin. I don't think I've ever seen a blemish on her skin. And she started to break out in basically hives. And when, when we started to look into it and inquire, she was detoxifying herself faster than she could eliminate through her kidneys. And she broke out, it was coming out through her skin. She let go, whacked off the oils a little bit and it began to uh, subside. She has issues with, uh, with bergamot in particular. Um, she puts it on her skin. So all of the citrus oils are photovoltaic. This is important and, uh, and very important to note, especially if you're gonna be out in the sunlight. So you don't wanna put these oils on your skin, on any part of your body that's gonna be exposed to skin, even your arms underneath the shirt. Um, yeah, any of your skin that's, a, that's going to be exposed to the sun for 12 hours. So if it's sundown, six o'clock, that's fine. But anything towards the morning or during the day, uh, you will break out and you will burn yourself. The sun will burn just the area where you're applying that skin. So you'll, and even if it's diluted. Let's talk about dilution for a minute. So dilution is putting any essential oil into any other oil. Some of the more common ones, sweet almond oil, Jehovah oil, what are some more? Rose hip, uh, sesame oil, coconut oil. Everybody has coconut oil in their house, right? Oh, we should, if you don't, get some. I should all over you, I'm sorry. <laughs> get some, get some, get some. So you can use any type of carrier oil and that dilutes the oil. So let's walk through just a brief exercise, right? If I have um, peppermint on my right hand and then on my left hand, I put peppermint and coconut oil. Okay, it's one drop of peppermint on either side. It doesn't weaken the efficacy of that particular drop. I'm still getting the same value medicinally. On my right hand, it will absorb and dissipate to the rest of my body faster than my left hand. My left hand, it will penetrate deeper, dissipate over more time, right? So as you start to think about different types of applications, you start to think about different medicinal uses, it starts to make more sense to dilute or not dilute in certain cases. Right? Um, particularly when you're using um, muscle or um, nerve, like if you have nerve pain, wintergreen is great for that. We have a massage oil, Deep Blue, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, uh, that's great for muscles, aches and pains. Oftentimes you want that to mix with a carrier oil, so it lingers in that area, penetrates deeper into the muscle in particular, 
unless your entire body's aching. And after a festival and running around, deep blue on my legs is one of the favorite, one of my favorite things to do. I do it before I go to bed, and it's amazing. So that's dilution. Anybody have questions on that? Dilution's really important. Getting down the right mix and knowing how uh, how potent is, is up to you. Deep blue. It's, it's a also blend. a proprietary blend for doTERRA. Comes in a lotion and a rub. I highly recommend the rub. It's amazing. Question? What would be like a usual dilution? Just to start off with, like how many drops and how many milliliters? Ten to one, right? Carrier oil to essential oil. You could go ten to three. Um, you know, first try the essential oil directly on your skin and see if you're having any adverse reaction. For me, the stuff that I bought in the store, I was constantly getting itchy and feeling irritated skin. But once I got to doTERRA, I can bathe in these things. It's just amazing. So once you have that quality of oil, oftentimes that's the issue. Um, the clothing test is a, great, is a great test. It should evaporate and not leave any residue. If it leaves a residue, it's, chances are it's mixed with uh, something, some other type of carrier oil or something else. So we're going to pass around some Melaleuca. Melaleuca is uh, it's tea tree oil, more commonly known. The biggest purchaser of essential oils is the beauty <laughs> and the healthcare uh, companies. And they don't really care about quality and they don't really care about the medicinal use. Um, and I guess I'll jumpstart a little bit because um, I think this is important to note. So much like the dilution mixture, right? Let's say I have a peppermint plant and um, let's say I have a farm and I'm growing. This goes on with what Penny was saying and, and distilling your own essential oils. Um, let's say I have two lavender plants on the same farm in the same part of the world with the same fertilizer and the same water and the same everything, right? One I cut down and harvest at 8 o'clock in the morning, one I cut down and harvest at 8 o'clock at night. They'll both smell like lavender. However, one will have a significantly more uh, or higher amount of linalool in it, which again is the active constituent that calms us and soothes us at a cellular level. Which one would you want? The one that was cut down at the right time to have the maximum amount. So understanding when and how to grow, of course the distillation process, all things being equal, just the time of day that you cut it down based on the cyclical, uh, hormonal, I guess uh, you could say, um, sequence of that plant will depend upon how much uh, active constituents and in what ratios they are to one another. So the reason we love doTERRA so much is because they geek out on the science. They have entire departments that are focused on growing and maximizing uh, the value, the therapeutic value of these oils. Young Living does too and of course there's a couple of others that are out there as well. If you have questions about a particular brand, you have a bottle here you want us to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it and at least give you my two cents on it. Um, again, for us, it's about getting a legit oil in your hands and it's less about using these two companies but it is two that we that we favor. Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. Yes. A little louder. Young Living. Young Young Living, yeah. Young Living's been around for 23 years. And then another question, what was the time of day that's better to pick? Was it morning or evening? Just an example. I don't actually know the answer to that question. <laughs> and it's also a different... The answer to that is it, it depends on the plant, first of all. And yep. second of all, um, I'm not sure you're going to be personally picking the plant. <laughs> so um, going with a trusted source is the most important thing that we can do as end users. Yeah, so woo. let's talk about uh, certified pure therapeutic grade, which the essential oil industry is not regulated. It's really important to note. Um, it's not regulated by the FDA, the EPA, um, how you grow, how farmers grow, none of that stuff is regulated. So you really need to find a company that you trust. And that's when we landed on doTERRA and really started to see a medicinal difference in how we were using them. Again, we started using the store-bought oils for EPEX headaches, and it wasn't until we really got to a doTERRA quality oil that we were like blown away at the efficacy and at the potentiality behind it and its use. So certified pure therapeutic grade is a quality standard that doTERRA has created for itself. Young Living has their own as well, but they basically have third party tests. I think there's 11 or 12 different testing processes that they take through. There's a gal in the back that's holding on that bottle of Melaleuca. On the bottom of it, you'll see a lot number and we can actually go into an app called source to you and we can actually see the chemical uh, spectrometer uh, testing of that exact batch. Uh, they reject batches on a regular basis. It's their commitment to having a high quality therapeutic grade oil that matches and equals the last batch as well. 
and for us to be teaching and educating on the efficacy of these essential oils and showing people, I need to make sure the peppermint I'm getting from talk to talk is going to stay consistent and the experience is going to stay consistent as well, especially when we're working with people that have some pretty acute illnesses. And I, I want to, it's really important to note that essential oils don't cure anything. And, and that's really important. They are merely, they're not a silver bullet. They're merely another tool that we have to use to feel better and to get our bodies to operate uh, in the right way. You'll see people talking about detoxing and detoxifying your body, probably one of the most potent and powerful things that you can do. And essential oils are just one tool that you can use to cleanse and detoxify your body or give your immune system a boost or give any type of cellular function a boost. And having that knowledge base becomes kind of paramount, right? It's one thing to walk around with, I don't know, I have 40 different oils on me at any one time, but not knowing how to use them or what application, that's something that we study on a regular basis and it's real important to us to continue down that path. Mm -hmm. and we have great resources. Great resources, absolutely. Yeah, we have social media. The name of our, our, our central oil company is called Healing Oils. You can find us on Facebook at healingoils.love. You can find us on Instagram, same thing, healingoils.love, Twitter, all that stuff. We also have a WhatsApp group. If anybody's interested in tapping into our group and our team, our team actually has a public group. Uh, we can take up to 250 people, so you can all join if you want, where we actually just talk about different ways that we've been using essential oils over the course of the day. We try and get those posts up on Instagram. We try and get those posts up on Facebook as well, so there's some more passive ways that you can uh, kind of keep tabs on us as well. Probably one of the most powerful is one of the books that we forgot in a bag that's sitting in my garage, but the modern guide, the modern usage guide, to essential oils is amazing and I highly recommend that there's a there's a 10 or 15 page book there's a spiral book and then there's a big book as well yeah, and what's great is that uh, we also have the there's an app for it um, modern essentials app um, it's amazing you can look at it uh, look there's different categories you can look at it per oil like if you're like I want to know how Melaleuca works you can go under Melaleuca read all about the ways that you can use Melaleuca and how to apply it um, the three environments that we talked about and then the, you can also look it up by ailment which is something that I use all the time so if I'm experiencing any um, you know like you said headache or any sort of like a back pain or sinus or just you know maybe have some menstrual cramps or anything like that you can see which oils are recommended and they list it out as primary secondary and um, third level so it's amazing so I recommend that for everyone uh, modern essentials yes I can show you after our should talk Okay, so let's talk about co-impact sourcing, right? I gave you that example of lavender and having lavender and two different lavender plants. Um, so co-impact co sourcing is also something that uh, only doTERRA does. And I've, I've looked around at all these different companies. And one of the things that really separates doTERRA is co-impact sourcing. So instead of going to where those plants grow indigenously and uh, building a factory, which a lot of companies do, instead they partner with local farmers teach them and educate them on how to grow to the standards that they need, form long-term contracts, um, and then um, take care of those families. They do it through a Healing Oils Foundation, which is a phenomenal leg or arm of doTERRA, which donates money to build schools, drill wells, right? doTERRA and Young Living, I'm sure, does this as well. They're investing in the future of the essential oils to make sure that they constantly have the ability to bring us that same quality of essential oils. What else do we want to talk about? We want to talk about On Guard? Yeah. All right, so we'll pass On Guard around. On Guard is great for immunity support. Uh, On Guard is equivalent to Four Thieves. If you've heard of other companies, most of uh, it's most often branded as Thieves Oil. On Guard is, a, is, a, is one of my favorite uh, blends that doTERRA creates. They have a whole product line, and uh, I've tried everything in there. It's amazing. They have cough drops, um, obviously the oil. Um, they also go into like the cleaning products. Um, there's hand soap, there's laundry detergent, and it's all natural. So it's, you know, that's, that's what we prefer in our home. Um, there's even a toothpaste that I love, and it's biodegradable, which is great for camping. You could just like, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. So let's talk about clove for a minute. Any, anybody familiar with the ORAC scale? O-R-A-C, ORAC scale. Cool, I'm gonna make this up, no, I'm just kidding. All right, the ORAC scale tests um, the antioxidant value of food. Check this out if you haven't seen it already. You guys know blueberries heavy in antioxidants, which are amazing. So because essential oils are 50 to 70 times more concentrated than their herbal counterpart, you find whatever's at the top of that scale, and if they make it in an oil, well, that's gonna be high in antioxidants as well. And clove tops the scale. 
It's uh, about 300,000 on that scale as an herb, and it's over a million as an oil. So it's one of the most powerful and potent things you can do to help combat disease by putting more antioxidants into your bodies by using clove oil. Cinnamon is also legit. It cleanses, it detoxifies, uh, and of course the rosemary, the eucalyptus, it opens up your lungs. Uh, rosemary is great with memory as well. Rosemary is something I put into my diffuser as uh, an aid when I'm studying or when I'm doing work or when I'm writing or anytime I want to be highly attentive. It's usually peppermint, orange, rosemary, uh, and I'll do like a lemongrass or something that I can uh, that can perk me up and, and, and energize me. Yes. I do a lot of juicing. Yeah. Like a blender. Yeah. Straight out of the garden. Put in there. It's great. Yep. Do you do any of that? Like Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Yes. We use them in cooking. So curry. one of my favorites is turmeric, right? Fresh turmeric. And I use pepper oil, black pepper oil to activate the turmeric. Okay. It's amazing. I use turmeric root. Yep. So anytime you're ingesting turmeric, pepper actually helps the body absorb more turmeric. So add pepper. You can okay. just do ground pepper or you can get pepper, pepper oil, but we use oil for that. We use cumin. Um, it's important, let's talk about that just in general before we talk about it uh, in more specificity. So um, generally speaking, you don't want to heat oils. Um, this gets back to kind of the diffuser scenario. If anybody has a candle with an oil on top of it and you burn the, you light the candle and it burns into the air, it changes the chemical constituent of the oil by heating it, right? So that's why we recommend a cold water diffuser versus heating it in any way, shape or form. Not that it doesn't smell nice, it does, but you might not get the same therapeutic grade out of it. Same goes for cooking. So if you're using essential oils cooking a hot dish, you don't want to put the oils in in the beginning. You want to put the oils in at the end, right before you're about to eat it. Cold, by contrast, you can put at any point during the process. And we love to blend it into our foods as well. Wild orange, lemon, um, wild orange, lemon, right? All the citrus are great. Grapefruit's phenomenal. It just adds a little flavor uh, to, that, uh, to that mix as well. We're putting cinnamon put cinnamon in my breakfast cereal. Mm -hmm. um, you can put frankincense. Frankincense is fantastic mm -hmm. for you to ingest. Frankincense supports healthy cellular function, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, there's so many great oils that you can ingest and put into your diet. Uh, one more thing I want to add. Um, one of my favorites is I love guacamole. And uh, so when I make guacamole, I put a drop of rosemary. Um, we have dill oil, which is amazing. I put some dill, lime, lemon. I mean, it's like just one drop in like a big bowl and you already get the and flavor. And it goes, amazing. it goes really far. They are potent. So it goes really far. One more thing about the, the heating. Um, one thing that I always uh, like to mention is when, when you put the oil on your hand and you go, and instead of going like this, which I see a lot of people doing, this creates friction. You know, so it creates heat. You'll feel it in the middle of your palm. So instead, when you put the oil on your hand or anywhere on your body, just lightly, gently spread it, and that's all you have to do. Frankincense? frankincense? Yeah. yeah. So frankincense oil. Everybody familiar with frankincense? Yes. Yes back? and no. Yeah, so go. our frankincense comes from Oman. Um, it's a very challenged part of the world. It grows from a tree. It's a tree sap that becomes hardened grows from a tree that grows off of cliffs hundreds of feet in the air. It's pretty remarkable to take a look at. It's one of the reasons why getting a legitimate source of frankincense is more expensive. It is one of the most expensive oils that's out there. I think with doTERRA, I think it's $93 retail and $79 or $69 wholesale. So it's a pricey oil, but it's a legit oil. I put it in my beard every day. I put it on my skin almost every day when I'm lucky enough to take a shower. It's one of the, one of the best things you can put on your skin. Um, it's great for healthy cellular function in general, and it helps your skin to look radiant, shiny, and anti-aging as well, anti-aging quality. Sorry. So, frankincense. Frankincense. Oh my God, it's amazing. Yes, it's one of the essential oils that crosses through the blood-brain barrier, which we're all familiar with, right? Generally, only glucose. The, the body's pretty protective of what it lets the, uh, the brain absorb. Frankincense oil is one of the few oils the body and the brain will actually expend energy. Right? You think about how energy efficient the body is. It will actually spend energy to pull frankincense oil into the brain and across the blood-brain barrier. So it's a very unique oil in that it's phenomenal for healthy function, cognitive function. It's great for studying. If you're going to take it while you're studying for a test or an exam, make sure you take it during the exam itself as well. Um, but really, really powerful. One of our favorite things, uh, ways to use frankincense is um, before meditation. One drop on the top of your crown, 
and uh, mm. the rest is history. <laughs> you guys should totally experience it. It's kind of hard to put into words. Um, and also, they say that frankincense, like when in doubt, like I have, you know, such and such happening, mm. fill in the blank, just use frankincense. <laughs> it's good for so many things that that could be your, your go to. It's called the king of oils. Lavender is the queen of oils, by the way. If that was your question. <laughs> totally different question. Yeah. Not 105 degrees. No. Yeah. It's not like. No, no, and in fact, it's phenomenal. What we have noticed, so Steve and I. Oh, absolutely. You want to be conscious of just using one drop, right? If you're putting it on people, um, you certainly want to ask them. Amazing. Perfect. So again, it's double diffused, right? Once in the water and then diffused again in the air as you're spraying it out. That should be phenomenal. I think that's a really nice thing to do during a hot yoga class, too. Yeah. Before the class, too, because it smells like sweat. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So much better. A little yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. So melaleuca would be great, too, to mix in there. Make sure you're using distilled water. Eucalyptus in the shower in the morning, oh my god, it's like a spa. Just put two drops in the corner, three drops in the corner of the shower where the, where the water doesn't run on it directly and it's just paradise as far as I'm concerned. I take a little bit of the spa with me everywhere I go. It's also, if you, if you have access to a steam shower, uh, bringing peppermint or eucalyptus, nine out of ten times, dropping it right on the spout or putting it on the wall, helps the whole room, opens up your pores, opens up your breathing, opens up your sinuses. Passing around a little bit of deep blue, you can enjoy that. Deep Blue is great topically. Um, we do have some other Deep Blue oil that we can share with you. However, uh, this Deep Blue just smell, if that's okay. It's great for muscles, aches, and pains. It helps with some nerve stuff because the wintergreen is in there, but it's really more muscular than anything else. Deep Blue is great to be added to a massage oil if you're a massage therapist here. One thing that I do want to note, um, make sure you check the dilution of anything that you're going to rub on your entire body. So I use the same dilution of something that I would use on a spot, like which is a heavier dilution. I think it was like 10 to one or 15 to one or something like that, or I'm sorry, it was a little more than that. Five to one was about half essential oils, half coconut oils, really, really potent and powerful. I used that on a full body massage and I was dizzy and I was having a hard time <laughs> for a little while because it was covering my entire body instead of covering just one area of my skin. So if you're gonna add a couple drops, I would do frankincense, lavender, and deep blue oil are phenomenal to add prior to a massage uh, or to integrate into a coconut oil or some other type of massage oil. Yeah. And perhaps diffuse some lavender during your massage for the relaxation. Mm -hmm. Breathe is a really powerful and potent respiratory blend. I mentioned already it's got peppermint, it's got uh, eucalyptus, it's got cardamom in there, it's got laurel leaf. So inside the proprietary blends, doTERRA often puts oils that we don't have access to in buying as just a single oil, and Breathe is one of those oils. Last year it was super dusty. I can't even tell you how many people uh, I offered Breathe to just to open up the respiratory function and get people breathing uh, a little bit smoother and a little bit easier. If you have a mask or if you've got uh, something to cover a respirator, if you're a Burning Man or someplace in the desert, phenomenal to put a drop or two of Breathe in your respirator. Oh, it's just wonderful. Yeah. Um, I put it on my scarf, I put it on my clothing, and then it's just a matter of covering up my mouth and taking a nice deep inhale. It's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. I know we wanna get close to wrapping up. Just a few things I wanna mention again. Our website is healingoils.love. We're also on social media. You can also email us, um, for those of you pen and paper, or, or you can write it down if you'd like. It's goldzulu, G-O-L-D-Z-U-L-U at gmail.com, goldzulu at gmail you can reach out to us personally we have our business cards um, once we break feel free to come up to us and talk to us we're happy to exchange contacts uh, as craig mentioned we have um, a great uh, team um, very resourceful ha people have been using oils for many many years um, so whatever questions you have even if we don't have the answer now we can get it to you uh, we have a WhatsApp chat. If you're interested in that, you're uh, more than welcome to exchange contact and add you on there. I think that's what I got. Yeah, we'll stick around for a little while and answer questions. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your time. Thank have you fun so this much, weekend. I really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day.